Well, good evening, folks, and I hope that you are doing great today. All right, so I left off last time filling out this game design document, so let's get right back to that so that we can move on to the pre-production phase where we're going to use this document to create things like prototypes and probably several prototypes. And I'm also going to be jumping back on this document in the pre-production phase as I find some things that may work really well, some things that might not work as well, and maybe some new concepts that I might come up with as time goes on. So this main page of this game design document is pretty much complete. All right. So let's go on to the game details. Okay, this the basic gameplay, uh, the basic mechanics, the rules, all this stuff has been filled out last night. All right, so game options. All right, so the game narrative is the next thing to fill out. So this game is not a very story-driven type of game. There's no really complex and, you know, compelling story to tell. It's just more focused on the gameplay itself. But a story-driven game should also include excellent gameplay as well. Because a good game has great gameplay. And it should be fun to play. It should be an enjoyable experience. And that's really the most important aspect to it. Okay. So the prologue. Provide the backstory of the game. Who are the characters before we get to see them? There's not really a prologue. There's not really a backstory to this game. However, I'm going to put in what happens at the very beginning before you actually start playing and this event is going to trigger pretty much the rest of the stuff that happens. So, the main character receives receives a mysterious voicemail at home becomes trapped in the house. And that's pretty much it. That is the prologue. Um, so I know it sounds kind of weird and like oversimplified now, but we can always make these types of events more elaborate in the actual game rather than trying to describe every single aspect of it. I just want to get the main ideas down for now. All right. The important plot elements. There's not really a plot. However, the placeholder text indicates to describe the items, abilities, uh, loyalties. We're not going to really have loyalties much. Uh, items, abilities, etc. Which will affect the story as well as the gameplay challenges they will face. Okay, so that, that can still be quite useful. Alright, so as I mentioned in the last video... Let's see if it's up here somewhere. Yeah, so moving and picking up objects. And also the... Uh, yeah, survive while escaping. Uh, you have to fight enemies and use escape tools. Um, somewhere here, yeah, so uh, a weapon and one tool. There's a flashlight involved. Uh, and I also put somewhere, oh yeah, items can be used to heal, so maybe you can use like a first aid kit or something like that. So, I'm just going to put kind of like bullet points, so items. So there are uh, weapons, and we can think of different types of weapons that are used. I'm going to lowercase this. Um, so the weapons, since we're in a, a house, right, it will probably be some household items like a knife or a baseball bat, uh, 
you, you know, just off the cuff, like MacGyver stuff together, make like a flamethrower or something crazy if you really want to get wacky with it. But I was thinking more uh, like simple things, like I said, like the knife or maybe uh, a shovel or a baseball bat, stuff like that. Things that can break and that are not necessarily the most effective at fighting off these ferocious nightmare creatures, right? So weapons, tools, healing items, and maybe something like clues slash um, collectibles. All right, so I like to have a game where there are collectibles within the game which may or may not affect the actual outcome of the game, but it's just something to put within the game to expand the lore or to um, give clues, like as I said, you know, clues, or maybe just give a little bit more universe building going on there. And by universe building, I mean maybe the collectibles can be pictures or something that gives the player a clue about what's going on, who this mysterious caller is, and so on and so forth. Alright, so abilities. So there are uh, combat abilities. I don't... I, you see, this is kind of where I'm on the fence about it. Combat abilities, sent to me, sounds like something you would have in an RPG or like an action-adventure game or something like that. Like in this game, you're just trying to escape and you only, you're not trying to go out and fight these creatures. You only do that when you have to, when they come up and they attack you, but then you, you just kind of you know, temporarily ward them off and then you have to run away from them, right? It's not like, oh, I'm trying to gain experience points by, you know, by fighting these creatures. So I'm, I'm not going to really have combat abilities. So, but I will have things like disarming traps, disarming traps, um, even setting traps, setting traps, uh, to, uh, yeah, just setting traps. What else? Um, some abilities. So in the house, I can include something like a smart home system to where you can maybe gather objects that are in other places in the house. Like maybe the camera will be in you know, a bedroom that is locked currently, and you have to find how find out how to get there before you can take that back and use it to your advantage, or maybe, um, I don't know. So the, the whole point is to have these ability, it's not an ability that you have to unlock as a character, but more in the level itself. So using smart home gadgets gadgets all right and i'm also going to put repairing weapons right because something like a shovel can break if you use it a lot and you're hitting stuff over the head with it bonking some nightmare creatures but you want to have maybe a workstation once you get out to the garage. Let's say you make it out the house and you make it into the yard and there's a garage. You can have like a little workstation where you can, I don't know, put some duct tape over. Duct tape fixes everything, right? <laughs> uh, stuff like that. And that's really all I'm going to put for now for the important plot elements because I don't want to... Uh, 
go too much into that without moving on to these other things that need to be done. All right, story progression and cutscenes, right? Um, provide the core story of the game. Well, like I said, there really isn't much of a story, per se. Uh, what happens in each chapter, episode, or level? Which of these will be gameplay and which will be cutscenes? So, I'm going to just kind of put my own version of this. So, cutscenes. Why is it in that weird thing? Cut. Yeah, cutscenes are. Oh, excuse me, my nose itches. Mm. Cutscenes are triggered after solving puzzles or fighting off some of the creatures. So I thought it would be kind of cool and also add to the horror element. If you can only fight the creatures and not necessarily defeat them because they're just these nightmarish types of things that are running around your house and they're really fast and, and scary and uh, much stronger and faster than you are. So maybe you can only fight them off, but they keep coming back. It's not like, oh, you, you know, you, you fight them and it's done. No, the, they just keep coming uh, so, um, that's, that's kind of a creepy thing to think about. Like you fight something off and then it runs off and then it brings like a whole army of whatever it was back to you. And these, the shadow people come after you or whatnot. Um, so fighting off some of the creatures, um, triggered. I also want to put at the beginning of each level. And I'm not going to say, like, it's going to be specific levels, more like areas of the house, right, are triggered at the beginning of the game and when entering a new area. Um... Sorry, my cat is distracting me out there. If you might hear him meowing at me. Um, when entering a new area after solving puzzles or fighting off some of the creatures, right? Okay, I mean, that the cutscenes, the content of the cutscenes can be dealt with much later. The epilogue, provide the ending of the story. So the ending of the game, basically. How has it changed? Is there post-game content? So, this is actually a, a very tough thing to think about. Um, most of the time, people have a hard time coming up with a beginning of a great story when they already have an ending in mind. For me, it's the opposite, because the beginning is so simple. There's just this weird voicemail that you get, and then like stuff starts happening. But with the the ending of the game, like the kind of the, the resolution of it, once you escape, what happens? So um, maybe you have to fight this mysterious caller, or maybe the caller turns out to be just this mysterious force that can never be understood by the main character, so on and so forth. I am going to kind of think about this for a few moments. And let's see. Okay. So, obviously, the main character escapes. Escapes all of the areas. And receives. Our end. goes looking for the mysterious caller. So another thing to keep in mind for the ending is that you can always set yourself up for a possible sequel, right? So if the main character gets out of all these areas and, go and looks for the mysterious caller, then maybe 
I can just end the game there, kind of like on a cliffhanger, say, oh, you know, is he going to find out who this person is or what's going on, why they were doing this, and so on. But I think I'm going to leave that there. And maybe in the sequel, there will be even more traps and, and more areas and maybe you finally find out what this mysterious caller is or who that mysterious caller is. And I don't know, maybe you have to fight them or something. That'd be that'd be interesting. But I'm just gonna leave it at that. So um I don't want to have the ending so disappointing. So I'm going to just say, like I said before, it's not set in stone. When I think of a better ending, I will let you know. Um, moving on. The world. General visual style. Alright, so... Let's just say... Mm, um, dark. Gritty. Uh, just dark and gritty, maybe. Yeah, I mean, a horror game usually is dark and gritty. Uh, I mean, yeah, it, it this is one of those things that where it's easier to show than tell this visual style. And maybe I'll add on to this after I make a prototype or several prototypes in. I'm like, oh, you know, like this is the style I'm looking for. And maybe I can describe what I see in words rather than uh, describe in words what I want to see. All right, so the general description of characters of air and characteristics of areas. All right, so this is just a, a more detailed uh, specific areas the players can travel to and what they will find. So... I'm going to say the main character is alone. And must go through each room of the house to... Oh, it's in this italics. It's kind of annoying. You have to pre press the back button several times. Sorry. Um... So the main character um, each area of the house house yard and I think another area that would be really interesting to explore towards the end of the game would be like a sewer to where it's just like this big labyrinth and like the you know the the climax of the the scariness of that All right so the house yard and sewer because maybe some clue left behind leads the main character down into the sewer to f try to find out what's going on or maybe they become trapped and that's the only way to get out because there's no other way to to go um, you know. All right, so characters, level details. Oh boy. So all right, the characters. I'm not even gonna bother with the character section because there's the main character, but it's in like the first person view, and it's one of these games to where it's just like this nameless, you know, character. This nameless person. Oh. oh, excuse me. Um, if I did another, uh, another cut as many times as I yawn, I would be here all night. So, <laughs> just bear with me when I yawn, please. Um, it's one of these nameless characters that just exists, and the whole point is to have the player take on the role directly of that character and make the player feel like he or she is actually in the situation which also adds to the 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 theme of the game right to be 
immersed and to be, you know, scared and things like that. So let's delete that. Let's delete this. Oh, it's not behaving naughty, naughty. Let's delete all of this stuff. Delete, delete, um, delete this one. Personality, backstory, we don't need all that. Delete that too. All right. All right, cool. All right, so here, um, which I believe is the last thing that needs to be filled out tonight, are the levels. Add details about the game's levels, length, gameplay mechanics, story importance, etc. All right, so some games, which I think this game should be included, will have a kind of a tutorial level, right? And that just gives the player the opportunity to... Um, just kind of roam around, learn about the game without taking on too much risk. And what by risk, I mean without, in this case, without traps or without enemies attacking you, just to get a feel of the controls, first of all, um, how to use items, things like that. So for the training level, I'm going to just say... Um, main character arrives at home. All right, so maybe maybe the character was out for a long night at work or something like that, and then comes home before checking this voicemail. And you know, I'm I'm kind of on the I'm not really old, but like I I do remember a time where. You would come home and then you would find your voicemail that, oh, somebody left me a voicemail um, and you couldn't just take it your phone out of your pocket. Um, there was a time, believe it or not, where that was the case. Anyway, um, yeah, so level details. So I'm just going to say, instead of main character arrives at home here, I'm just going to say main character's. Um, uh, driveway, right? So, level details. Main character arrives at home after a long night at work. Notices a few things out of place and by this I mean maybe there's like some trash or something on in the yard that need to be picked up it gives the player I mean it's it sounds like torture to, to make the well, not really torture but it just sounds so trivial um, to make the player learn how to play the game by picking up trash but this will kind of set the tone and set the feel of it because you come home and things are just not right you know it's just like hmm like why is why is there you know this trash in the yard like was somebody here you know and stuff like that it, it kind of builds up the suspense of like oh something's not right you know um so main character arrives at home after a long night at work notices a few things out of place all right so, the objectives is to um, let's see, find find items out of place in the driveway and yard. Put them back. Or just put them away. Or there might even be some useful items at the very beginning, such as a flashlight or something. Maybe this is where 
you you can find a flashlight that this mysterious caller has dropped or something and when you get inside maybe the power is out and you have to try to find you know the fuse box or something like that um put them away or take useful items to be used later right and the main character obviously doesn't know what's about to go down uh, when when he goes into the house but maybe he's like oh well there's a flashlight here and it's kind of dark outside so maybe i should take this so i can you know find uh, oh i noticed that the the street lamp the street lamp or the porch light was out or something like that so you know things like that and that just kind of sets things up to where it gives the player a few very basic items to start out with rather than completely empty-handed all right the main level one I'm just gonna say living room so main character um sees there is a few voicemails some are mm, some are ordinary or some are I'm just trying to think of the right word I'm I'm tired and I'm trying to think of uh yeah, some are ordinary calls, but there is one that seems odd, right? So in the living room, when you walk in, maybe on the counter or you put your coat up or whatever and then you see that little blinking light on the answering machine um oof. and then um you press the button and it starts playing the voicemails uh, or instead of having the phone be attached like the the corded phones like the old school like you you have to hang it up on a hook or whatever maybe the player or maybe the character has left his phone like his mobile phone his cell phone in the house and he comes home and is like oh yeah you know i forgot my phone or to make the inventory and the whole gameplay kind of interesting the phone can be like a main tool that you can use to view all of your cameras and things like that so um, put the item away so the item that the character can find maybe that is his phone right so that would be kind of interesting so put them away and that would also explain the, the flashlight if I haven't said that already <laughs> so they would have the flashlight and maybe different apps on the phone that you can use um, you know, to, to look at your cameras or to try to unlock certain doors. Maybe in some of these apps, maybe there's some weird apps that are downloaded that will give you clues um, and, and so on and so forth. So let's see, find items used later, such as cell phone. All right, so going back to the training level you're just going outside you're interacting with items you're you're cleaning up your driveway you you know you find your phone laying on the ground and you're like hmm, how did how did my phone get here i thought i had it with me at work or something like that and then you so you pick that up and then you go inside into the living room and that's where the you know the, the main gameplay starts so the main play the character sees there are, there is a few, there are a few, um, uh, voicemails. Some are ordinary calls, but some seem odd. 
as the main character. Um, goes into the living room. There is another call from the same mysterious or another mysterious call, I should say, just mysterious call. All right, so the objectives are to, first of all, you know, you're in the house and then the power goes out. So the my mysterious call and the power goes out. All right, so the first objective could be restore power because maybe you have some... Um, you know, something that you need to be unlocked. For instance, uh, you have a security system or that, that will electronically lock your doors or something like that. And in order to get into other areas of the house, you have to restore the power first. And then maybe uh, your, your key isn't working or something, or you have lost your key. And you're, you know, they mysteriously vanished and they're scattered throughout the house and you have to find them or something crazy like that. Um, so restore power, find keys. Um, maybe respond to... Uh, callers demands All right so maybe the caller is telling you to do certain things in the house like oh you know if you want the key you have to um, go turn the TV on after you restore the power I, I say you know you restore the power and then you know might might say oh go turn the TV on and then put this disc and uh, like this DVD in and watch this video and maybe the video could be a clue as to what you have to do next and so then you you know that's just one idea it, it there's always all kind of crazy stuff you can do with that but that's pretty much the objectives all right so the main level two um i'm just gonna say inside the house for this instead of living room inside home the reason for that is because this is kind of pretty much the same stuff going on inside the home there's of course going to be different types of puzzles you don't all want it to be you know one thing happening but it's basically the same thing you you restore the locks you find keys respond to the caller's demands you solve the puzzles to get to the next area or the next room within the house. So maybe <clears throat> the level two could be outside. So that could be the backyard. All right. So main character, let me do this real quick. Yep. Main character gets out of house but must find a way out the yard the backyard because the gate is blocked or locked from the outside all right, so let's just assume that there's a really tall fence keeping you in and you can't really just break the fence. Uh, or maybe you can, and maybe there's some puzzle to solve to where you can find a saw or something like that and, and you know, cut through the fence or 
if it's a metal fence, then you can like use the wire cutters or something. Um, so objectives. Escape the yard, obviously. Um, find find clues as to find or find clues for next objective. Um, and maybe this could be where like a lot of the creatures just kind of come out. Um, they'll also be within your house, but outside is like where it's really happening. You know, they, they just all kind of, they come, they jump down from the trees and they start running around the shed and they start doing all kind of crazy stuff out here. Um, so then, uh, fight off enemies. So I'm going to leave it at that, right? Because... Like I said, this is just a really rough draft. It's It doesn't have to be detailed to the point where I can write the entire game just based on what's there now. This is going to evolve over time. This is not a, a static document. This is a very dynamic type of thing where I can always add, take out, change things around. This is just to give me an idea going into the pre-production stage, all right? So I didn't really go too much in the the interface, so I'm going to say for the controls, the movement, I'm just going to say basic uh, first-person controls includes includes Climbing, um, crawling, and jumping. All right. So object interaction. How are the objects going to be interacted with? So maybe, um, just for instance, if the player is using a keyboard, I also want to use um, a game pad, like just a you know, one of those plug-and-play type ones for the PC. And also, hopefully, optimize it for the Steam Deck. But, the object interaction, for instance, on the keyboard, you'll press the E key or something like that. So, um, interact with objects via a dedicated button or key right and by key i mean on the keyboard not uh, a key in the game per se so first person perspective okay and so yeah i think this looks good for now I now have a much better idea of the type of game I want to make, and I'm going to add more levels, so don't worry. It's not just going to be, oh, you're in the house, you restore the power, then you go outside, fight some creatures, and then you're done with it. Uh, so <laughs> just bear that in mind. I'm going to you know, elaborate on this a lot throughout the process. But I'm going to call that it for tonight. I don't want to drag this on too much longer. So, let's go on the board here. I'm going to call this done or complete. I'm going to call this complete as well. Then it is now in the complete column. So, there's two complete tasks. All right. So, tomorrow I'll be starting the pre-production phase. And we're going to get uh, involved in using some of these tools like the Unreal Engine and Blender, stuff like that, to make prototypes, storyboards, all kinds of exciting stuff happening tomorrow night. Until then, have a great night. See you next time.